I was able to pass the JavaScript test, but am I smart enough for the CSS test? Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now recently, I went through the JavaScript skill assessment on LinkedIn, and I ended up getting in the top 5% of all people that took the test, which is really good. So I decided to also take the CSS test since you really enjoyed the JavaScript one. And I've actually heard that the CSS one is pretty tricky and quite a bit harder than the JavaScript one. So I'm really interested to see if I'm going to be able to score well on this or if it's going to be more of a struggle. So without any further ado, let's get started. For the very first question we have, which choice is not a valid value for the font style property? So we have italic, normal, none, and oblique. Ooh, that's actually a good question. I'm not 100% sure. I would want to say none. Because none doesn't really make sense because you have normal, which is like the default value. You can't have no font style. You have to have like normal, italic, or oblique. I've never personally used oblique, but I think it's a slightly different version of italic. Could be wrong though. None just doesn't seem correct because what is a none font style? It's just normal. So I don't know why you would need both of them. So I'm going to go with none, but I'm not 100% sure on this one. Let me know in the comments if you know this answer. Okay. In this shorthand example, which individual background properties are represented? Ooh. So we have the, the color here. We have image is the URL. This is the background repeat. There's no repeat section. Scroll, not sure of. And then this zero and zero, that's the position, I believe. So let's see. Background scroll, I'm assuming, is what the scroll means. So we have background position here. Repeat. Source, that's not correct. It should be image. Yeah, okay. So this one's image, repeat, color, position. That's correct. This one's color image, repeat, position. So it's either background attachment or background scroll. I don't think it's attachment. That just doesn't seem like, why would you add scroll for attachment? That doesn't seem right. I think it's background scroll. I'm going to go here because background color is blue. Background image is the URL. Repeat for no repeat, scroll for scroll, and position is zero, zero. That seems correct for me. Yeah, we're going to go with that. When adding transparency styles, which is the difference between using the opacity Property versus the background property with an RGBA value. Ooh, interesting. Opacity applies transparency to the background color only. Background with an RBGA value specifies the level of transparency of an element as a whole, including its content. Okay, no. Okay, I know this is saying. So this is like reversed. This should be reversed. Opacity sets the level of transparency of an element, including its content. Background with an RBGA value applies transparency to the background color only. I think that's it. Okay, opacity specifies the level of transparency of the child elements. Background uh, applies the background color only. Opacity applies transparency to the parent and child elements. Background with an RGBA value specifies the level of transparency of the parent element only. Ooh, interesting. Okay, I think it's this top one, just because content would include children, but I think it does apply to children as well for the opacity. But I think it's this, because background only applies to the background color, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I've never really thought about this, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. Which choice is not a valid color value? Ooh, okay, this is good. Um, actually, okay, this one's really easy. So RGB, that's just straightforward. That's black. This is also black with hex code. This down here is also black for a hex code. This is just six zeros. There's no indication of what it is, so that's incorrect. If the width of the container is 500 pixels, what would the width of the three columns be in this layout? Okay, so we have 50 pixels, and then this is divided into three individual seconds. So we have 450 pixels remaining after this 50 pixels is you know, specified. So 1FR would be 150 pixels. 2FR would be 300 pixels. 300 plus 150 makes 450, plus 50 is 500. So it should be 50, 150, and 300. That one was at least easy. The values for the font weight property can be keywords or numbers. For each numbered value below, what is the associated keyword? 400, that's normal, and 700 is bold. That should be right here, normal and bold. And I believe that 700 is bold. I don't think it's bolder. I'm pretty sure on that. Don't quote me because I don't ever do this. I know 400 is normal, but I'm pretty sure 700 is bold. Normally, I just use the keywords instead of writing out the numbers. I find it makes more sense. Which statement regarding icon fonts is true? OK, icon fonts can be inserted only using JavaScript. Icon fonts require browser extensions. Icon fonts are inserted as inline images where icon fonts can be styled with typography or later properties such as font size and color. This is the only one that I think is true. This would be like if you used like Glyphicons in Bootstrap, for example, or like Font Awesome before they used SVG. That's what an icon font is. They're, they're generally not 
good. You should use icons like SVG icons instead. But if you want to use an icon font, you can actually modify it with font properties because it's just a font. Okay. What is the line height property primarily used for? So this is for like the height of lines for like spacing between lines. To control the width of the space between characters? Nope. That's I think called letter spacing. Not sure. To control the height of the character size? Nope. To control the height of the space between heading elements? Control the height of the space between two lines of content. Yeah, that's that one right here. So if you have like a paragraph tag that wraps multiple lines, the line height will determine how much space is between each one of those lines. For like if you double spaced a paper, it would have a higher line height. In this example, according to the cascading and specificity rules, what color will the link be? Oh, specificity, everyone's favorite thing. Luckily, I wrote an entire blog article about specificity, so I should hopefully be able to get this right. Uh, so we're asking what color will this A tag be? Um, so, okay, it has a class of example. Okay, this one's actually really easy. So classes are more specific than element selectors, so it's going to be yellow because that's what the class selector has. Because all these, it doesn't matter how many elements there are, even if there's a million elements, one class overrides all the elements. Which style places an element at a fixed location within its container? That's position absolute. That's the only one that changes the position to a fixed location. All these other ones are within the document layout. Okay. In this example, what color will paragraph one be? Looks like another specificity question. But paragraph one is here. So one interesting thing to note is that first child, this P first child, selects the first child, which in our case is a heading H1. So it's not going to be green. Uh, container, so it will default to yellow, but this P tag will override that to be blue. And then the P of first type will give us the first P tag inside of its element. And it's more specific than this. Oh, actually. Okay, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe that a selector such as first type, I don't remember if that actually applies itself as a like class when it comes to the order of operations of selectors or if it's ignored. I think it applies itself as a class, so this should be red, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure not is the only pseudo selector that doesn't actually count for anything. So I think that this will have like one element and one pseudo class, essentially, which is what first of type is. That'll be more specific than just the element selector. Not 100% sure, but I'm like 80% sure. We'll go with it. Which statement about block and inline elements is true? So block will take up the entire width. That's correct. Inline elements are the same height and width as the contained content came between their tags. Okay, that sounds correct. Block elements are the same height and width. That's definitely wrong. A nav element is an example of inline element. Header is an example of a block. I believe a nav is a block element, so that's incorrect. A span, okay, this is also incorrect. These are flipped, so it's definitely this first one. So far, this hasn't been too bad. Using the nth child pseudo class, what would be the most efficient way to style every third item in a list, no matter how many items are present, starting with item two? Okay, so... Already, I think it's this first one because 3n means we're going to style every third element and starting with number two, you add two. So we're going to be starting with the second one. This is obviously not efficient. This starts with the third element and on it, like these two answers are exactly the same, like B and C, they both are the exact same answer. They just flipped around the order of the things in the parentheses, which doesn't make any difference. So even just by order of operation, this first one's the only one that works. In this example, which selector has the highest specificity value for selecting the anchor link element? More specificity. Okay, again, this is luckily an easy one. It's dot example A because it has a class in front of it, which is always more specific than element selectors. So that's pretty much the same as a question we've already gotten before, which is nice. In this example, what is a selector property? What is a selector? What is the property? And what is the value? Okay, so the selector is the P tag. The property is color and the value is the actual value. So color is the selector, incorrect. He is a selector, color is a property, and the hex value is the value. Pretty straightforward. These last couple questions were nice and easy, at least. Let's see how we did. Okay, sweet. So we got top 5% on this one as well. There were definitely some tricky questions in this one. And again, unfortunately, I can't view the ones that I got wrong, but I actually feel really confident about almost all these questions. There was a couple that I was a little iffy on because they were really, you know, like obscure parts of CSS. But overall, I felt really confident with this CSS test. I'm interested if you take this same test, let me know how you do in the comments below. And if you have any information related to the questions that I got wrong or maybe weren't sure on, let me know as well. I want to hear like what your thoughts are. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other LinkedIn quizzes over here and let me know which one you would like me to take next.
Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.